want to remind him, Sam? You didn't tell me we were starting. <laughs> I just wanted to start first. Now, video number two with lovely Sam. Really? <laughs> I just can't think of a nickname, so I just came up with that. <laughs> do you know what we're going to do today? Yeah, we are going to do part two. Ah, okay. So I'm glad that you know that. Which means you're going to be answering another question for mm-hmm. me. It's going to be very similar to last time. I will show you a question and then you will have about 30 seconds to think about what you're going to say. All right. I'm ready. So for you guys who are watching, um, the question that I'm going to show Sam today is a type of question you might see on Selpip part two, the speaking part, of course. Are you guys ready? Here is the question. Talk about a personal experience. And in this case, talk about a time when you experience a culture shock. You can talk about the time when you visited a new place. What happened? What surprised you? And how did you feel? I would like to talk about cultural shocks that I experienced when I started to settle down in Canada. Um, one day, one of my Canadian friends invited me to his house. At the entrance of his house, I took off my shoes. Uh, my friends told me not to take off my shoes. Uh, I didn't know that I should keep, off, keep my shoes on. In my country, we always take off my, sh- uh, take off shoes when we entered one's houses. I was, you know, kind of flustered at the time, and I'm not still familiar with this culture. Oh, oh, one more thing. In my country, there are not many indoor places, including carpets. Those are culture shocks for me. (sighs) Ah, I'm done. Wonderful. You did speak for about 60 seconds. Let's go straight to the response. I've transcribed the response from Sam earlier, and you guys can see the sentences that I've typed here too. Mm -hmm. The opening statement. I would like to talk about culture shocks that I experienced when I started to settle down in Canada. Maybe there are a few things that I'd like to point out here. Because you're sharing your experience and you're only given 60 seconds, maybe you don't want to say culture shocks. Because we probably expect hearing only one of them. Mm -hmm. So just keep it in a singular form. I would like to talk about a culture shock that I experienced when um, this one too. I started to settle down in Canada. This adverb of time, when I started to settle down in Canada, is not a very specific point of time. So it's hard for us to imagine when exactly it happened. What I mean is, it could be, oh, in your first week, in your second week, or on your first day, we have no idea. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, when I started to settle down, just mention the period exactly. For example? In my first week in Canada. Mm -hmm. Or when I first arrive in Canada. Uh, Sorry, when I say that, maybe it's not exactly specific, but... The audience know, okay, that's the beginning of your stay in Canada. Mm -hmm. Or you could even just say one day. That also works. Okay. One day, one of my Canadian friends invited me to his house. I don't think I see any problems here. At the entrance of his house, I took off my shoes. So when you say at the entrance, um, where is it exactly that you're referring to? I already entered uh, his house and there's uh, some space because yeah, maybe if you see at the entrance of his house we can also think that it's outside you're standing in front of the door no i already entered the house right. what if um i use this as soon as i entered his house mm-hmm. as soon as i entered his house i took off my shoes okay it could be so As soon as I entered his house, I took off my shoes. My friend told me not to take off my shoes. 
First of all, um, I would like to recommend that you put a linking word maybe before that subject, my friend. After Actually, that? you said my friends. Uh, obviously, it's singular. Uh, what linking word can we put in front of it? I just said after that. Sure. After that, my friend told me not to take off my shoes. Or when my friend saw that, he or she told me not to take off my shoes. Next, I didn't know I should keep my shoes on. In my country, we always take off shoes when we enter one's houses. The beginning is great. I didn't know I should keep my shoes on. However, the next part. In my country, we always take off our shoes. Right? Don't just say we always take off shoes. We always take off our shoes when we enter one's house. The house is only one, so it's not houses. Oh. I was kind of flustered at the time, and I'm not still familiar with this culture. Same thing here. Put a linking word in the beginning. For example, at that time, at that moment, at that moment, I was kind of flustered. I was kind of flustered at the time, and I'm not still familiar with this culture. In the second clause, I suggest changing the order of the words. How? Uh, you'll say I'm still not familiar with this culture. So instead of I'm not still, I'm still not familiar.、Mm -hmm. Right? Because the not here. So the not is connected to familiar. I'm still not familiar with this culture. And one more thing: in my country, there are not many indoor places, including carpets. I think if somebody hears this sentence, the person may be confused because of this、uh, part where you say there are not many places, indoor places, including carpets. Rather than that, there are not many places indoor with carpeted floors. That means floors that are covered、mm -hmm. by carpets rather than tiles, for example, which are maybe more common in Asia. And your closing sentence: Those are culture shocks for me. Going back to what I said in the beginning, we're just talking about one culture shock, so you don't need to say those are. There is only one. That is a culture shock to me, and that would be enough to end your answer. Actually, I didn't have、like, enough ideas about this. The good thing, though, you're able to speak for sixty seconds, right? So even though you say you don't have enough ideas,、uh, as as we can see, one idea is enough.、Mm -hmm. uh, you just need to I expand like I wanted, yeah, on that I one to... story. That you Answer one more than one question.、Mm -hmm. so. With regards to the topic, sure, I can imagine that some people don't have any ideas to talk about, or they might say, "Oh, I've never been to other countries, so I can't really talk about culture shocks." Again, here they're testing your speaking ability, so don't think too much about that.、Um, if For example, you've never been abroad. You've never experienced、um, a culture shock yourself. You can talk about a different culture that you saw on TV, or from a story that somebody told you. And in the beginning of your answer, you can just explain that. For example, you say, "Oh, you know what? Last week I was just watching this documentary on TV about the life of people in Canada, and I found it very fascinating." When you explain it like that, the listener know that it's not your personal experience, and that's okay. We are done. Oh, thank you for helping me improve my English skills. Oh, my pleasure. You know, I'm、um, I'm happy that you you're here with me, helping、yeah. me again. <laughs> that's my pleasure too. So, should we end the video? Bye bye. Bye guys. Bye bye. See you next time.